Hello everyone and welcome to Mass Analytics Masterclasses. We are in Season 2 where we'll be diving deeper into the data processing or the data transformation. In today's course, we'll be covering what I call the arithmetic transformations, things like dividing, uh, creating a ratio, multiplying, and so forth. My name is Ramla and I am the CEO and the co-founder of Mass Analytics. Multiply. Very simple, the processor multiply allows the user to multiply one variable by the other. Now there are different applications on why you would use the multiply processor. For example, uh, you want to create a synergy effect between two variables, for example your paid search and your TV activity. You will take the TV GRPs and then you multiply them by the paid search clicks for example and you obtain an interaction effect that will help you measure the interaction or the synergy effect between these two variables. In this example we try to explore further the interaction between Easter and TV activity. So what we are going to do is basically apply the multiply processor by taking the Easter variable and then multiply it by the TV activity to obtain the interaction effect. Now, how do we interpret the coefficient of that interaction effect? Assume that we have created this equation and we have estimated the coefficient. In particularly, when we look at beta 3, we found that it's actually a significant coefficient and it is positive. That means that each time that your TV activity is running during Easter, it has an additional uplift to what it has when it's not run during Easter. In that context, we can advise the brand to continue uh, using a television activity during Easter. Multiply by a scalar. Pretty much straightforward. Take a variable and multiply it by a factor or a given scalar. For example, we want to convert volume sales into value sales. So all what we need to do is to take the volume sales data series, multiply it by the average price, and we will be obtaining the value sales. Divide. The divide processor is simply used in order to help you divide one variable by the other, for example, to create a relative variable. In this illustration, we have created a relative price variable, whereby we have divided the price of the brand that you are modeling by the price of its competitor. This is a relative price variable that if it's above one, it means that the price of the brand that you are modeling is higher than the competition and if it's less than one it means that we are actually more competitive when it comes to prices when we compare us to the competition and this can help us see what is the impact of this relative price position on the sales divide by a scalar this processor divides the selected data series by a specific parameter that is defined by the user for example we want to create volume sales and the data series we have is value sales, but we also know the average price of the product. All what we need to do is to use the divide by a scalar processor in order to divide the value sales by the price in order to obtain the volume. Ratio processor. Ratio processor allows you to divide one entity by the other to create a ratio. One of the best applications I can cite in this context is the creation of the promo depth variable that is related to the CPG vertical or the FMCG product modeling. Generally, we receive data on value and volume, value on promotions, volume on promotions, volume on non-promotions, and value on non-promotions. And we want to create out of these four data series a ratio variable that will help us measure the promo depth. To create the promo depth, you just need to Take the ratio of the promo price divided by the non-promo price. Weighted sum. Weighted sum allows you to add up different variables while assigning a different weight to each one of them. There are different applications of the weighted sum. One of them is the creation of the 30 second equivalent GRP. We know that the longer the spot length, the more costly it will be. Therefore, if you want to create a 30-second equivalent GRPs, we need to use the cost as weights for the different spot lengths. Another application is what we call the media mix variables. For example, we have different media variables that are running at the same time. 
In this example, I have TV and radio happening at the same time. It's very difficult to put them in the same model because we can run into a problem of multicollinearity. What I decided to do is to create a weighted sum where I'll be assigning different weights to these two different variables. And then after that, I'm going to test which set of weights is the best when it comes to mimicking the series movements that I have. So this is one application of the weighted sum when it comes to the creation of your media mix variables. Adder. The adder processor is actually a um, simple case of the weighted sum where the weights are equal to one. It's simply adding up different variables together when we assume that they have equal weights. For example, we have three outdoor campaigns and we think that these three outdoor campaigns should have the same impact on the sales. So what we decided to do is to add them all up into one main variable and we will have one coefficient later on when we run the modeling and that coefficient will tell us what is the average impact of outdoor on sales. The log processor. The log processor allows you to apply a natural log to your data series. Sometimes you want to reduce the skewness in your data sets or have a more convenient distribution and that's where you would be applying this processor. This is an example of how log could be applied to your data in order to reduce some of its skewness. Power. Power transformation allows you to apply a power to your data series. For example, you can go for a power that is less than 1, for example, the square root, the power of 0 0.5, or you can go for a power that is above 1, like the uh, power of 2 or power of 3, etc., etc. Generally, we use the power transformation in order to reduce the skewness of the data or to get a shape that is closer to normality than the original one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope these videos uh, added some increments to your marketing mix modeling knowledge. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos like this. Please comment in case you have any questions and it would be my pleasure to get back to you with all the answers that you are seeking in the context of these videos and in the context of marketing measurement and marketing mix modeling. Thank you very much.